Hello. In this video, I'm going to explain what injection curves are and how to interpret them for your injection molding process. So let's get into a few slides here now. So on this graph here, we've represented the screw travel and injection time on the x-axis and on the y-axis, then we have the, the pressure. So we're going to consider this to be the pressure that we're reading from our molding machine, so the curve on our injection molding machine. Now, if we zoom in to this area here, now you need to be careful on setting the, the graph, how wide it is. Um, I would recommend trying to zoom in just on the injection phase or the injection area. So maybe that takes one second or so. Um, I would set the x-axis here to a maximum of one second so that you're focusing in on that injection area as such. Okay, so just to point out some of the areas here of the, the curve. So number one, we're going to start injection, zero injection time. As the plastic flows in through the mold, then you may see a deflection or a change in the, the, the curve. Um, this is where the, maybe the plastic is, is just dropping pressure through the nozzle of the machine. Again, in through the feed system and into the gates, you may, you may see a deflection in the curve. Again, um, so this is where we're dropping pressure across the gate system. Again, no more than 10 bars of uh, pressure drop across the gate would be normal. Anything more than that is really excessive. The Next deflection point then may be where the part is full. And if we, for whatever reason, overshoot, um, and we may switch over at a later point up here, this position five. So we're switching over then at that point to this lower holding pressure. Now we need to be mindful that the overfilling the mold is, is never a good thing. We usually try to switch over at 95 or 98% full. Um, so this overfilling between four and five, this overfill distance, whether you count it in time or the position of the screw, this overfill of the mold, you're going to see a change in speed at that overfill. So you, you, may, you may not, dep depends on the compressibility of the material, see a deflection here. Like I say, you may need to zoom in to the graph to actually see that. Okay. Now let's have a look at the screw position on your screw. You're going to start at um, the screw position of whatever if you've plasticized it back to. So let's say it's 100 millimeters. As we start to inject, the screw is moving forward all the way down to this switch over point, And let's just say it's 10 millimeters. So you're gonna see the curve for your screw position decreasing from the plasticizing. And uh, like I say, maybe we set it at 100 and we're injecting it all the way down to our switch over where let's say we've set it at 10 millimeters. So you'll see that curve straight line going down. And then once we switch over, you might get the screw bouncing back and the screw moving back to let's say 11 or 12 millimeters and then holding at that. So that's the position curve of your screw on, on the curve. And it's, you probably see them overlaid the pressure and uh, the position of the screw. Next thing you need to look at then is the injection speed. Again, try to use the scale so injection time, try to use that scale so that it incorporates the injection plus the holding um, on, on, on the curve. Okay, so the green line represents the speed. We set a speed here, and uh, let's say it's 200 millimeters a second, we set a speed. Now what the machine actually does, it just ramps up to that speed and then tries, to, it may overshoot that speed, it'll reduce and try to find that set speed. 
So the machine response is a little bit lagging and depends again if it's an electric machine or a hydraulic machine. But you generally get the machine bouncing here and trying to stay at that set speed. Um, okay, oh, by the way, if you find this content of use and get some value from it, would you mind hitting that like and subscribe button? Also, the bell icon there, and I'll update you when I upload new content like this. Um, so now we're looking at the injection speed and how the, the machine follows our set speed. Now, once the part is full, so we said this position four was the position the mold was 100 or 90, 98 percent full. Uh, and we're, we said this is the position where the part, the mold was full of plastic. Now, what we're going to see, or we may see, is the speed begin to reduce as the mold fills more resistance um, the speed at which the plastic enters the cavity will reduce so again if you zoom in on that area kind of really take a, a close look in at that area you may see as the part is full or almost full you'll see a reduction in the speed of the, the curve the actual injection moving screw moving forward you may see that speed reduce so i'd watch out for that particularly when you're coming close to um where the mold you think the mold is almost full and what we like to say is when the part most full part in the mold has slight sink marks in it that's when you kind of know the part the mold is almost full so watch out for that speed decrease around that position um, where the part is full. Watch out for the speed diving down. And then you know you need to switch over at that position and don't overshoot past that position and overfill the mold because the pressure will go up. You may see the speed going down and you've overfilled the mold. So you need to come back to that position where you see the first signs of the screw speed slowing down significantly. Um, okay, as always, um, thank you for your attention and time. Um, I do run a course with a lot more detail about injection curves and speeds and how to set up your injection molding machine correctly. Uh, so the links are below there if you're interested in that. And always, if you have any questions or comments on this video, you can leave the comments below. Thank you. Until next time, stay safe.